Hello! In this video, we're going to be taking a look at everybody's favorite key performance indicator, the progress bar. We see them all the time. Progress bar is just a simple indicator, a bar that fills up from left to right. Uh, it's a universal concept that we all understand. And it's something that helps to give some visual appeal to your views in SharePoint. Uh, so it's definitely something we're going to turn to again and again. Now, out of the box, SharePoint has a nice option to format a progress bar. We're going to take a look at that. Unfortunately, it's a little bit limited. We don't have a lot of ways to change how that looks or adjust it, um, but it's okay. Additional to that, we're going to take a look at three other dynamic options to have a different look for progress bars in SharePoint and something we can do really easily. So that's the focus for today. Now, let's get SharePoint smart. All right, so I'm back here in SharePoint Online, and we're just going to start with something very simple. I just have a view set up to demonstrate our different progress bars, and just about as plain as you can get. I've got seven columns here. We've got our three first columns, which are just called Measure 1, Measure 2, Measure 3. Those are number fields set to allow values 1 to 100 and uh, they're going to be used as part of one of our examples. Our fourth column is what I call a placeholder column and I just called it triple bar because it's going to hold one of our examples which is a stacked progress bar and I just made this a calculated field. It says formatted in there. That's just a placeholder text. It's going to be replaced. That's not used for anything and you'll see that change. And then the last three columns are also number fields. However, in the case of those columns, I set those to be show as percentage in the field settings. Now, it looks pretty similar to the first three columns, but it's important to understand the value being stored in SharePoint because of that setting is from zero to one. Meaning, for example, for 45%, the actual value stored in SharePoint is 0.45. Um, so SharePoint does some things in the user interface and the stored value according to whether you use the show as percentage option. Okay, so we're really interested in the look of the progress bars according to those values. As a beginning point, what we wanna do is take a look at what's there out of the box, which is pretty good. Uh, we're going to do our progress one column and we're just doing the format this column option and SharePoint's smart enough to know that this column could be used and they call this data bars. That's what they call their progress bars, data bars. Now I can just click that option immediately. You can see those show up. So that's about as simple as it can get. Now maybe I'm interested in tweaking some things. One thing I noticed right away I don't like, it's thinking that the maximum value is 0.7 since that's my highest value. Well, that's not actually the case. Maybe I want it to be according to 100% because that's going to be there. It does accommodate for negative values. We're not going to show that in this video, but if you have a range which could have negative and positive values, this type of progress bar could be beneficial to you. The other ones I'm going to show don't account for that type of scenario. And then naturally I may want to change the color. So we'll just change that over. Um, I'll just make it gray and that's about it. Um, I just hit save and that's your out of the box progress bar. Pretty simple concept. Um, I can change that to whichever color I want. Not a bad option at all. Okay. So that's out of the box. Now we're going to take a look at some more progress bar options. So I'm going to hop over to this tool that we have, which is SharePointDashboards.com. If you go into this site, just click on the green button at the top 
and this is going to be the source of our other progress bars. If you go to this main list drop down, you'll see them all grouped together. We've got three options, progress bar dynamic, progress bar gradient, and progress bar triple. We're going to look at all three. All right, so here's the dynamic progress bar. When I clicked on the menu, it just gives me a preview. So right away, I've got a pretty good idea of what I'm going to get. Now, as soon as I hit the stop preview button, it's going to give me a real time view of what I'm going to see. This progress bar incorporates the concept of changing colors based on threshold values. In the example, it shows three colors, blue, orange, and green. And these are according to how full that progress bar is. Now, I do have the option to adjust that threshold. By default, you can see at 50%, there is a threshold and at 80%. That means everything lower than 50 would be blue, everything 50, 80 would be orange, and then everything above 80 is lime green. And then I can go into my little color picker and let's make some adjustments. Okay, so um, I don't know, we'll make the middle one kind of, it's light salmon, we'll do that. Why not? Okay, and then for the other one, um, I kind of like that blue. We'll, we'll do something slightly different. And then additional to that, I can just font colors. Okay, so there's a percentage value in the background. I can tweak it. Notice the level of detail in the control. Um, these are things we didn't see in the out of the box. I can even change fonts, which is certainly not anything you're going to do in out-of-the-box SharePoint. Um, let's change that to Tahoma. And that shows me a real-time preview of what that's going to look like, even before I move this code over into SharePoint. Now, once I have that the way I look, I'll just hit copy code. It copies that into my um, paste on the computer, and I can just toggle right over. And let's go ahead and stick that in progress bar two. Now, unlike picking the out of the box option saying, no, I'm not going to use the Microsoft one, I'm going to go to advanced mode, and then I can just paste in my own code, paste, save. Very simple, very easy. And you can see it's exactly what I was looking at. And you can see that the color values are different according to how full that is. Um, so you know, you could do kind of a cold to hot concept if you like that, blue to red, um, whatever you want. And you can play with those colors and do do however you want, but you can tell um, that's a different kind of concept than the out of the box Microsoft progress bar. All right, I think we can go ahead and move on to the next one. The next one we'll take a look at is called progress bar gradient, okay? And this one has a gradient color in the background. And in this case, what you do is you're selecting from a background image. There's a default out of the box. You can switch it up. There's nine options. Um, I'm just changing the referenced image in here. So we're previewing some of those. I'll take that one. And then it's asking me what I want for the inside font color and the outside font color. What that means is the value um, in terms of where it's located can change. Also, I can toggle on options to have the end of the bar curved or not. Um, and then if I can choose whether I want a border. So it's very configurable. I, I kind of want the um, inside values to be white so it stands out on that dark background. So. I just go under here, it says inside font color, that's the second choice. Go to my color picker, and I would say that looks about right. Maybe, I'll make the font size slightly bigger. Looks good to me. That's what I'm gonna get. Even before I go back to SharePoint, I already know what it's gonna look like. Copy that code. Hop back over here, and we'll use that for progress three. I need to format this column and I'm going to bypass the out of the box options and paste to my own. I just do control A, control V, save. 
Now it's scrolled out of view. There they are. Okay, very different look. Notice that the placement of the value changes when it goes under a certain amount. Now in this case, the color is just a gradient image and there are different options. So you can browse through the set. There's nine different ones. It just happens I picked this uh, green and orange. Um, yet again, a distinctly different look compared to the other ones, but a lot of flexibility in terms of adjusting that. All right, and the third one we're gonna look at is something where we're actually going to have a set of values and stack progress bars one on top of the other. So for that one, we're gonna to go to progress bar triple, and there's our preview. So again, we already kind of have an idea of what we're gonna get before we even do it. Okay, and I'm gonna pick some different colors. Let's go with blue and red and green. Um, I can't see those too well, so we're gonna change the color. And it says the text color is HTML color, so I'll switch that up to white. Okay, now I can read them better. And what else? I can do the um, background. If I want to do something different for the background color, I can. Let's make that a little bit darker. Yep, I like that. Um, I'm satisfied with how that looks. Oh, the other thing is, in this case, it needs to know where it's reading the values. The other examples, it was just taking the value that was in the field where it appears. This one's different. This is taking values from three other fields. So in this configuration, I need to say what those fields are. Over here, we made fields called measure one, measure two, and measure three. Those have spaces in them. And in my template, it doesn't. So I need to put the spaces in there or it'll break. All right, so I got those. Um, I just hit copy, come over here and go to where I want it to appear. This is what I call the placeholder column. Format the column, paste. There it is, okay? So maybe you have like three key measurements or something per record. This is actually bringing that all together in one row. Um, something very different than you're out of the box. Okay, and then what I might do is make these kind of match up. So. That's referring to measure one, the blue bar, so maybe I would like to format that. So I could use the out of the box settings to my advantage here. So I could do format this column. And there's just a simple option called conditional formatting. And I can do things like change the background color. So that one's blue. So I can make that blue. You can see this is really simple to do. I'm just making it correspond to my stack progress bar. All right, so I'll do format. And that other one's red. Okay, so let's do red. Okay, it's pretty close. And then the other one's green. So column settings, format this column, and we'll go in here and pick green. Okay, so <laughs> now we've got a view that looks completely different than what we had. Recall at the beginning, we just had Simple text values. There's no visual content in this display whatsoever. Now, naturally, you wouldn't put all of these things together in one view. It's a, it's a bit overwhelming. Um, you want some balance. What we're doing here is comparing some different options. We're doing some sandboxing, if you will, just to play around, get some ideas of different things we can do. Um, so I hope you like those options. I hope next time you're going to do a progress bar, you consider that you have more things than you can do rather than just simply going right to the default out of the box. Um, so there you go. And you can get to this in the uh, SharePoint dashboards.com site and the templates that we showed in today's video, those are all uh, free ones. Lots of other cool examples there as well. So I hope you will check that out. And um, all right, there we go. So that's enough with <laughs> SharePoint view. Um, the KPI indicators, this includes all kinds of different concepts. When we think of what are called KPIs, um, this could be progress bars, flags, pie chart. They're visual indicators to 
show measurements, give us a visual understanding of the data instead of that plain gray and white data grids that nobody really wants to look at. So this is kind of a part of a recipe, if you will, and this is something you want to turn to. Um, so you want to browse through those options. One key aspect of what I was showing you is that configurator tool, that ability to tweak colors, tweak font size, font family, border, curves, all those type of things real time where you don't have to do any coding or anything like that. So even before you go back to SharePoint, you can see what you're going to get. What you see is what you get. You can get that tweaked and looking just exactly how you want it before you even move that code and format over to SharePoint. So it really speeds things up. It makes the changes immediate and you can make everything fit together and match up nicely in whatever kind of dashboard that you're going to make. So hope you like that. Please play in there and try that out. Let me know what you think and we'll see you in the next video.